Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ariane. I am a luxury travel advisor based in Vancouver, Canada. And today I have just boarded the beautiful Oceana Cruises Riviera here in Barcelona, Spain, and wanted to give you a full review in one episode of the ship and take you around some of the public spaces on board, as well as what you can expect from the dining, as they do say it is the best cuisine at sea and also give you a bit of a room tour. So let's kick off with that. I am in a deluxe ocean view stateroom. So let's give you a room tour. I was cruising in the deluxe ocean view cabin 7070 on deck seven. It was incredibly spacious and I had it set up as a queen bed as I was traveling by myself. The bed was extremely comfortable and I slept so well. I also really enjoyed that this deluxe ocean view cabin had floor to ceiling windows. They were the same size as balcony windows or doors. However, they obviously didn't open, but it had the feeling that I was in a veranda, which was really nice. The desk area was also great for doing my hair and makeup and actually getting a little bit of work done. They have USB chargers as well as a North American plug here. Behind the phone, you would find a European outlet and another North American style outlet. There was some shallow drawers here where you would find your breakfast room service order forms, as well as some extra drawers which I used for some of my clothing items. Over by the bed and the couch area, there were some extra USB charging ports as well as another European and North American outlet. The closet was also a decent size and also included two robes, some slippers, and also a umbrella that you could use while you were on the ship. There was plenty of storage, I felt, as well as some laundry bags and also a safe. Unfortunately, the safe was quite small. I didn't fit my laptop or anything like that in there. In the next drawer down, there's a included hairdryer. Oceana also includes these Vero water bottles that you can use during your cruise. You can fill it up with the complimentary still and sparkling water that they can leave in your room. And the reusable water bottles are yours to take home after your cruise. As non-alcoholic drinks are included on Oceana, you will find your mini fridge stocked and replenished with non-alcoholic beverages throughout your sailing. I really appreciated the size of the bathroom in my stateroom. It had so much storage and was quite spacious. I also really enjoyed the rainfall shower and also the step in the shower, as well as some of the organizational elements. They also use Bulgari amenities within the stateroom and are replenished as you use them. When you first turn on your television, you'll have a welcome aboard message followed by the safety briefing that will automatically play. After the safety briefing is completed, you'll be able to access so much on the television. It's actually great. You can view the currents, which is the daily program available on board, which has all the different shore excursion departure times, also all the dining times and things that are happening around the ship. Unfortunately, at the time of my sailing, Oceana Cruises didn't have an app, so I did find myself utilizing the TV to check the currents and also my onboard account regularly to make sure there were no additional charges on my account. I 
I also really enjoyed stalking the different menus. They would actually have the room service menu and also all the menus available for that evening in the various restaurants available for you to check out in case you wanted to kind of make your plans around what was being offered at the various restaurants around the ship. I did order from the room service menu a few times on my Oceana cruise over the 11 days and I did find the food to be quite good. Every evening I did fill out one of these breakfast menu cards to have coffee and a few pastries delivered to my stateroom every morning. I also really appreciate the complimentary guest laundry areas available on board Oceana Cruises ships. There were some washers, dryers, and also some laundry detergent that could be used. Now let's give you a ship tour of the Oceana Riviera, starting in the beautiful atrium, which is located midship spanning decks five and six. On deck 5, you will find guest services, the shore excursions desk, the restaurant reservations desk, and also a concierge area. Also on deck 5, you'll find the boutiques, which sells a variety of items including makeup, duty-free, clothing, and also jewelry items. Deck 5 forward, you will find the lounge on board Oceana Riviera. Here is where they have live entertainment, and during our sailing, we actually had a few cooking classes with Jacques Pepin and his daughter Claudine. It was quite special to have them both on board and really enjoyed all the classes that they did. On deck 5, you'll find Jacques Pepin's restaurant called Jacques, which is a wonderful French restaurant and I really enjoyed my meal here. On Oceana Cruises, the specialty restaurants are included for all passengers at least once during your sailing. You can be put on a wait list once you're on board and restaurant reservations do open before your sailing, depending on the level of stateroom that you book. One of the other restaurants that is available on Deck 5 is Red Ginger. I have to say this was actually probably one of my favorite dining experiences on board Oceana's Riviera. The food was absolutely incredible and brought me back to Asia. Moving on to Deck 6, you'll find the Oceana Club Ambassador and Future Cruise Sales. Also on Deck 6, you'll find Martinis, which offered live pianists playing in the evening, which was a great spot to have a drink before dinner.
The grand bar tends to be a overflow waiting area for the grand dining room, which is located on deck six at the very back of the ship or the aft of the ship. Here, this is open for breakfast and dinner and some lunches on sea days. During our sailing, it was only open during breakfast and dinner. The grand dining room is an open seating style of dining, so that means that you do not need reservations to dine here. You simply arrive to the dining room at your chosen time of dining and they'll do their best to seat you immediately. I ate here for breakfast and dinner on several occasions and really enjoyed all the meals that I had here. I also tried some of the vegan and vegetarian options and was definitely not disappointed. Let's continue our ship tour up on deck 12 where you'll find the artist loft. Here there is an additional charge for art classes as well as right across from the artist loft you'll find the culinary center where there are optional cooking classes available. Out on deck 12, you'll find the pool and hot tubs midship. Here, there are plenty of comfortable loungers to enjoy some sunshine in the Mediterranean or wherever your Oceana cruise takes you. Next up is the Waves Grill. This is an outdoor area where breakfast, lunch, and dinner is served poolside. It's a great casual dining experience and for dinner they offer charcuterie boards and fresh pizza. Starting to move towards the aft of the ship, you will find La Reserve, which is a specialty restaurant that does come with an additional cost. Here they do Dom Perignon pairing dinners as well as other various specialty tasting menus. Then you'll find the Terrace Cafe, which is another casual dining experience here on board Oceana Cruises. Here again, there's breakfast, lunch, and dinner available, as well as dining out on the terrace, which honestly was probably where I ate at least 60% of my meals on this cruise because of the views and the weather. I really enjoyed the salad bars that they had and most of the food was actually served to you. You weren't actually serving yourself. So it was buffet style. However, you wouldn't actually serve yourself, which was definitely cleaner in my opinion. The food was also made in smaller batches, so it was very warm and there was even lobster available on some evenings, so I didn't feel like I was missing out dining in the grand dining room, as some of the meal offerings were usually the same. Moving up to deck 14 aft, you'll find the specialty restaurant Toscana and also the Polo Grill. Toscana is the Italian inspired specialty restaurant on board here on the Oceana Riviera and the plateware on the dining tables are all by Versace. I thoroughly enjoyed my dinner here at Toscana. They start you off with an incredible bread basket followed by your choice of olive oil and balsamic vinegar from the cart. I obviously tried the beef carpaccio, had a pasta course, and also had the veal melanese for my dinner here, followed by, of course, a tiramisu for dessert. Next up is the Polo Grill, which is the steakhouse on board Oceana Riviera. Again, my meal here was quite good and very filling. My dinner was so filling, in fact, that after my surf and turf, I literally couldn't even order dessert.
As we start to move midship on the Oceana Riviera on deck 14, you'll find the library, which was a really cozy area to grab a book from the vast library here, or even just relax with a coffee from nearby baristas. Also on deck 14, you will find a boardroom available. So this was available for small meetings to be rented out. However, it was mostly used for card games and where you could pick up some daily crossword searches and Sudoku. As complimentary non-alcoholic beverages are included with your cruise fare with Oceana Cruises, I did frequent baristas daily for my daily fix of coffee with some incredible views. Here at Baristas, they also have a internet cafe area as well as lovely seating areas inside and outside. They also have an area that they serve light bites throughout the day. As we move forward on deck 14, we will find the Aquamar Spa and Fitness Center available. The Fitness Center was really well equipped and even had the Vero Water water dispensers so you could actually dispense still or sparkling water to refill your water bottles here. They also offer a mix of complimentary classes as well as paid classes. The Aquamar Spa has a full salon area with pedicures, manicures, and hair treatments available for both men and women. They also have quite an extensive spa treatment list including massages, facials, and of course body treatments. I particularly loved using the Aquamar Spa Thermal Suite which is complimentary to use for all passengers. There is a sauna, steam room, experience shower, and also the thermal heated loungers, which I absolutely loved relaxing on after a long day of walking outside. On deck 15, at the front of the ship, you will find Horizons Lounge. This lounge was really popular in the afternoons as they serve a complimentary afternoon tea, as well as live entertainment. The afternoon tea is accompanied by a string quartet, and then a band would usually play and people would actually dance the night away. It was actually a great location to relax and enjoy the evenings either before or after dinner. I really enjoyed the afternoon tea here at Horizons Lounge. The offerings did change every day, so it made for a new experience every afternoon while relaxing. Up on deck 15 at the aft of the ship, you'll find the walking and running track and also areas to play bocce or croquet and also on the other side, shuffleboard. Deck 16 forward, you'll find an extensive golf putting green, which was actually a lot of fun, and also a paddle court where you could play tennis and also pickleball.
They also had a netted area where you could practice your drive. That concludes the ship tour portion of this video. I'm now going to go into a brief day by day of what the itinerary looked like on board my sailing here on the Oceana Riviera back on October 10th, 2023. We boarded the ship in Barcelona and really spent the day exploring the ship initially, filming my ship tour, and just kind of enjoying and relaxing after a busy day. If you wanted to see what I got up to in Barcelona, there is a link on my channel to a separate video that I recorded on my experience of things you can do and see in Barcelona over a couple days. Day two on board Oceana Riviera was visiting Valencia, Spain. I will say that another reason I love sailing with Oceana Cruises is that if the port is not directly in the city center, they include a complimentary shuttle, which in our case actually went by the old F1 track, to the city center of Old Valencia. So it was really easy and walkable to explore and take it all in without needing a shore excursion. Day three of our cruise took us to Alicante, Spain, where I decided to spend quite a bit of time up at the Castillo de Santa Barbara. It was really easy to walk from the ship to the entrance cave, which is actually an elevator to the top of the mountain, which in this heat, it was definitely recommended. Once at the top, it was really nice just to explore the castle and also take in all the beautiful views.
day four brought us to beautiful Ibiza, Spain, where I did explore a little bit of the old town before it was really busy. Most of the things were unfortunately quite closed still at this point in time, and I did need to head back to the ship for some work calls, but was glad I was able to get out and explore a bit. Day five was exploring Palma de Mallorca. I absolutely loved Palma. And again, I was one of the first ones to leave the ship and go and explore. Palma has so much to offer in the way of food, architecture, and of course, shopping. Day six brought us to Marseille, France. It was quite windy today, so I decided to stay on board the ship and complete filming my ship tour as many passengers had left for the day and also to catch up on some much needed work. The following day on day seven, we were supposed to anchor off the coast of Saint-Tropez, France. However, due to the extremely rough seas, we unfortunately were not able to tender. So we had a sea day instead. The crew really did do their best to try to keep us all entertained and even Jacques Pepin decided to do a question and answer for us. As the weather was a bit gloomy, I also chose to spend most of the afternoon enjoying the thermal suite. Day 8 was spent in Monte Carlo, Monaco, where I thoroughly enjoyed exploring here because I am a huge F1 fan and have always wanted to come to Monaco for the Monaco Grand Prix. So exploring Monte Carlo was a lot of fun for me and really enjoyed walking around and exploring all that Monaco had to offer.
As a luxury travel advisor, my clients typically receive added benefits when booking vacations, hotel stays, and cruises through me and my team. I'd love to work with you as your travel advisor if you don't already have one. Please contact me using the link found in the description box down below or visit my website at wonderlessjourney.ca. Day 9 of our cruise brought us to Portofino, Italy. Unfortunately, the weather didn't really cooperate, but it was still such a beautiful place to visit. We were also so fortunate that our ship was able to anchor just off the coast, so our arrival spot into Portofino was right in the heart of the town. Portofino was incredibly beautiful to visit, not to mention it offered some very luxury high-end shopping and also some great places to have a cappuccino or a lunch. Day 10, we were docked in Liverno, Italy. I decided to stay on board the ship today because it was the last full day to really enjoy the Oceana Riviera before needing to depart in Civitavecchia tomorrow morning. So I really hope you enjoyed this review video of my cruise here on Oceana Riviera. I really did enjoy my 10 days here on board and it went by way too quickly. <laughs> I highly suggest Oceana as a cruise line. If you are interested in more information on booking your next Oceana cruise, definitely reach out to me in the description box down below. I've left my link to my contact me page and also you can visit my website as mentioned in the video, wonderlessjourney.ca for more information. So as always, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also be sure to hit that subscribe button down below as now I am heading into Rome. I am so excited to be back in Rome. It's actually one of my favorite places to visit so I can't wait to show you um, some of my favorite places to check out if you do visit the Eternal City. <laughs> so as always thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye!